Hi, I'm Ken Collins of Bad Shoe Productions. Uh, I've been producing automotive how-to videos since the early 2000s. I specialize in Ford drivetrains, uh, and most of my videos are really on automatic transmission repair and rear end repair. Now, over the years, I've gotten lots of feedback from customers and questions. Um, the number one question is, you know, why does my transmission not upshift, or why does my transmission go in reverse and won't go forward? Uh, those are the typical uh, problem uh, symptoms that I'll get and you know where people will want to go in and you know do a repair on a transmission. The most, uh, the second most asked question is uh, who do I recommend as far as brands for overhaul kits and where do you get specialty tools? So I started putting together a list of uh, brands that I use and uh, uh, many of the components that I uh, deal with myself and started uh, putting together a stock and, and I'm now selling overhaul kits. And if you go to my website to the you know parts page you'll see a list of overhaul kits and I have upgrade kits where uh, I add you know a front pump bush and you know modulator and a, uh, maybe intermediate band and uh, you know like filter and so many times the, the regular overhaul kit doesn't include these items. But more importantly, I've added uh, in my inventory a lot of support pieces, select fit thrust washers, uh, bushings, you know, uh, servo pistons, these type of things, which very often will need to be replaced to, and it's not the normal um, things that are sold by, you know, most uh, automotive parts houses. So I always stress in the video to you know, study the situation, study the uh, subject first, you know, watch my video. If you have some, you know, shop manuals, you know, look at that. Then do the disassembly and then the inspection. And after the inspection, only then do you want to really order parts because you almost always wind up needing a few more parts that you, you know, didn't have on your original list. So if you send me your grocery list of parts that you need, I can put together a quote for you and uh, we can see if you know if we have them in stock and uh, then I can you know put that package together for you. Now as far as uh, specialty tools go if you you know watch my videos you can see I, I'll show a little alternative ways of uh, you know doing you know certain procedures in the transmission like uh, you know I might put together a couple pieces of angle iron and some threaded rod and use that as a clutch spring compressor. Uh, I show, I think in most all of my transmission videos, it's old uh, um, transmission, you know, uh, clutch spring compressor tool that I made just using a bunch of spare parts. So here lately, I've actually, you know, produced that. And here it is, it's kind of a cleaned up version of um, the uh, clutch spring compressor that you've seen in, you know, many of my videos. Uh, I sell these uh, pretty regularly. And um, I've made it uh, in such a way it'll fit, you know, pretty much all the rear axle drive Ford transmissions um, that use that style of compressor, you know, for their, uh, you know, for the clutches. And also found, you know, works on a power glide too. And I'm sure there's probably some other three speeds of other brands that it'll work fine as well. Another tool that I think might be important is uh, um, bushing knockers. Now, in most transmissions during a regular overhaul, uh, very often you really don't need to replace any of the bushings. But there are a couple bushings that tend to be, um, you're, you're going to see a little bit more wear on those, and that's the extension housing bushing and the pump bushing. So I have, you know, two prototypes here. Uh, this is uh, my, um, extension housing bush and knocker. This one's actually for C6. Uh, I probably would make another one for C4, which in the course of C4 one would also work on AOD. It would work on a T5. Uh, the C6 one would also work on FMX. And then you have yet another size for the 4R70W. And the other one, of course, I was talking about is the pump bushing. So the this knocker here I've made, uh, it works pretty good on these bushings. Some of these bushings, like the C6 bushing, is kind of wide. So I made the shoulder real long to have more support. There's also a little step here 
So when you, you know, knock it into the pump, it'll actually countersink it slightly into the pump. I find that uh, over the years, the Ford has a little bit different offset on that bush, and uh, sometimes I'll pull them down and they're actually flush right with the pump gear itself. But most of them are countersunk about 50 thousandths of an inch or so, and that's what I have that one set up as. Now, if you were going to do, say, a lot of C4s, for instance, you might want to get bushing knockers for every bushing in the transmission, and I think there's about 10 bushings you know, in a C4. And every one of them, of course, is a different size. So I've come up with this prototype right over here. And this is for a late model C4. This would be for a 70 or later. The earlier ones use many of the same bushings, but a couple of the bushings are actually smaller because you have a much smaller input shaft on the early models. Therefore, you know, a couple of these knockers would be different. So if I go and produce these uh, knockers, you know, you would have to specify whether you have the early or the late model C4. Here's the, of course, the handle here. I tried to make it kind of long. And uh, then you have these individual knockers for each bearing or each bushing. This one right here is the extension housing bushing. This one is for the direct uh, uh, clutch drum. Uh, it's a bushing on the direct clutch drum. This is for the pump, very similar to this, except it's you know, made to be you know, threaded onto the handle here. This one is for the hub. It's a bushing on a hub that goes down into the forward clutch. This one is for the rear case bushing. It's in the back of the case. This one is for the sun gear bushings. It's actually two bushings in the sun gear. And then you have these two and that's for the stator support bushings. And they're actually two different ones because it's a slight different offset uh, of the front one to the rear one. And also the, the outside diameter of the bushing is slightly different between the two as well. Now this one right here is this great big one and it's for this real large bushing that goes in the back on this right here which is the reverse um, brake drum I guess you call it and you rarely see that bushing damaged uh, so therefore I might make this tool an optional tool and you would just buy that separately if you happen to have uh, you know a problem with that bushing but you don't see that one bad that often so I would probably have that as a separate piece. And of course you have to have a way of getting the old bushings off. So uh, you can use a cape chisel, but I might even add uh, this bushing chisel right here. It's, it's made specifically to knock bushings out. And this one actually goes in the air hammer, but you can, you know, you can use a ball peen hammer on the end. It works just fine. And I will likely put it in a nice you know, little box like this right here. Okay, there's three more prototype tools I'm going to show you uh, real quickly. This one right here is just a simple aluminum bar. It's got a couple holes drilled in it. On each side, I've milled down the bar so the thickness is 700 thousandths of an inch thick. And what this bar is for is to check the end play and intermediate clutch pack clearance on the AOD, AODE, and 4R70W transmission. You take uh, a depth mic or a veneer caliper and you go down through these holes and you get a reading and then you take that reading and you go to this Ford chart and by translating that reading you can find out what uh, thickness select fit thrust washer to use to get the right end play or what thickness uh, select fit uh, top steel plate for the intermediate clutch to get that clearance correct. Um, in my videos you've seen me use the Ford version of this uh, tool, it's steel it's pretty pricey, kind of hard to find them, so I thought making this one out of alloy, I can sell it at a you know, reasonable price. This tool is actually a three-in-one tool. By using a couple holes here, you put this over top of the overdrive servo on an AODE 4R70W. You take this pinch bolt and you compress the servo down. It allows you to get that snap ring off. It's a very strong spring under there. And, um, uh, you will find that there is some alternative ways of getting that uh, spring compressed, but it's kind of difficult. This really makes that job a lot easier. 
By using another one of the holes here, you can also use this one on the low reverse servo. Now that one doesn't have a very strong spring on it, but by using this tool, freeze up your hands. It makes it a lot easier to get that snap ring off and on. And then I have a third uh, purpose for this tool. Use another pair of holes here, and you put this pinch bolt right over top of the 1-2 accumulator. Again, the spring that's inside those accumulators are very strong. And so if you just suddenly, you know, just took a snap ring pliers and, you know, push the snap ring in and that spring will, will launch that cover and it'll hit the ceiling line, will hit you in the head, you know. So by using this tool, you can compress that cover down, takes the pressure off of that snap ring, and certainly when you're going back together with it, if you've watched my 4R70W video, you're seeing me struggle, I'm taking my thumb and I'm pushing it down and then I'm you know, trying to get the snap ring on with the other hand, makes it very difficult. This tool you know, pushes that cover down, it simplifies it very nicely. Lastly, I have this air plate tool. Now this one is for an AODE 4R70W. Got a bunch of holes in here to hold it down in the area, you know, on the bottom of the transmission where the valve body normally goes. The plate will come with uh, probably 20 short uh, metric bolts to hold it down. There's eight holes in here that are labeled. That's where you introduce your air and you can check your, uh, all the clutches in the uh, transmission and the uh, two servos. And again, this one is for, you know, the AODE for our 70W. I will make a different plate uh, like this for the AOD. There's a little bit different holes, a little bit different bolt pattern. I've added one more feature that the Ford plate does not have, and that's this little peephole right here. By looking down that little peephole, you can see the band, the overdrive band. So when you introduce air into the overdrive servo, you'll, you should be able to hear the servo go down, but you don't know if it's really rotating the band. You look down that peephole and you will physically see the band rotate. Because you should know if you're working on those transmissions, if you're not real careful, you can put the servo on and not get it engaged in the lug of the band. This way, send air on the air check. You can look down the peephole and you can actually see the band apply. I think it's a nice uh, extra little feature there. Now I have a few other tools I have planned to make. But I'm listening uh, and waiting for your feedback. I want to know, are these tools something you would be interested in? Are there tools that you would like to see me make? And um, I will take that into consideration. And about every month or so, I'll probably do another one of these videos, and I'll talk about some projects that I'm working on. I might talk about some customer concerns and uh, some good explanations on you know, how to watch out for certain problems that uh, many of my customers have uh, stumbled on on their projects. And so um, thank you very much for watching this video and as always, good luck on your project.